So a lot of the preparations going on now. There's the uh, jacking point reinforcement. So that's coming on quite nicely. Finish the back of the inner wheel arch. I ended up having to add a bit here as I was welding this bit in. It became obvious that this was quite porous. So I just cut it out, put a new plate in there, much safer. So that's much better. Let's get some better light on it. Yeah, that much, that's much better. I've painted the bit that doesn't need any more work at the moment. Let's have a look at the weld down there. Let's get a bit of picture on that. Yeah, that, that patch has gone in quite nicely. So I've got to do something very similar at the back here. Got a big hole here. This seam, I've seen that rot away before because it's where two seams join. And this is much easier because uh, there's much less structure behind here. I can afford to get a complete sheet of metal in there with only one piece of uh, structure that goes across here, roughly about there anyway. So I've started to work on the edge of the inner mudguard. So this was uh, a part of that edge here which I left on deliberately so that it would keep the shape of the inner wing. I've taken that off now. I've replaced it with this uh, quite large patch. And the reason I've got this large patch is because it's got some tricky angles. So the angles that I'm talking about is there's a curve here like this, and there's also this curve here like this. So I just put the large patch on. I've started cutting it away. So that bit's cut away now. I've marked it on the inside here and I've just got to mark it a bit more accurately. Then I'll cut this away and that will be the inner wing complete. And it will just follow on from what's above it. And then the wing itself will attach to that. So this part here is made up of the inner sill. Then you've got the outer sill, which has a lip there. So I think what I might do is just replace this with a piece of uh, new metal so that I know exactly where all the pieces have got to go back together again. But also it will give me something to attach the inner sill and the outer sill to. There's this part of the inner mud guard welded up and I've cut that off. I'm ready to put a new piece in here and then I can start fitting the inner sill. I've now owned five MGBs and on at least three of them I've had to replace the inner sill. Now they all rot in the same place. So let me just show you that first. This is one of the most common places that they rot. So I've cut this away and that's what I'm dealing with right now, as you know. Now I've been giving it a bit of thought and what I'm trying to establish is why do they keep rotting in these places? So here's a theory that I've got. So here's the underside. I've got a hole here, a hole here. I've got one there. And I've got two more back here. So there's one there and there's one there. Now I'm pretty sure they're put in there to allow any water that gets into the castle rail gully here to drain away. 
I think what's probably happening is that not only is water getting out, it's also getting in and probably staying there. And when that sits in this little gap here, it's just going to rot the metal away. So there's two things I can do about that. One, get rid of the water and two, protect the inner sill with some rust proofing stuff like uh, wax oil, etc. And that's what I'm going to do with this. But also, I'm going to use the Bernoulli principle to try and help with getting rid of the water. So let me explain what I mean by using the Bernoulli principle. So when I was serving, I spent a lot of time as a helicopter crewman instructor. And uh, one of the things that uh, we had to achieve was uh, an annual inspection to make sure that we're teaching appropriate stuff. And because of that, we needed to know an awful lot of stuff like uh, meteorology, principles of flight, rules and regs, etc., a whole lot more. So I did that uh, for a number of years and also 10 years after I left as a contractor. Now, one of the subjects was the Bernoulli principle. So let me just show you what that is. That is an equation that explains the Bernoulli principle. So put more simply, and this is something I can fully understand, an increase in the speed of a fluid occurs simultaneously with the decrease in pressure. Just as an aside, this is one of the reasons that a wing produces lift. So a wing is longer over the top than it is over the bottom. So in order for the air to meet at the back of the wing at the same time, it's got to travel faster over the top. So Bernoulli's principle states that if the air is traveling faster, you get a lower pressure. And the slower air has got a higher pressure, so the higher pressure is going to push the wing up, and that's how a wing produces lift. Now, if you're skeptical about the science here and whether it would work, let me show you this little experiment. I've got two normal pieces of paper. Put them close together. And I'm going to blow between them. Now, when I've asked the question in the past, almost everybody says that the pages will blow apart. So just watch this. So the reason that they're coming together is that the pressure between the two is reduced. So the pressure on the outside is forcing the paper in. So the way I'm going to use that on the car is as follows. So we've got the holes which are in the castle rails depicted here in the picture. And this cavity is normally going to be sealed. So as you travel faster, the air travels underneath the car at whatever speed you're going at. and is passing along these holes. And as the speed increases, the air pressure relative to this cavity is going to reduce. So the relative air pressure below is lower than the air pressure in this sealed cavity. And therefore, the air pressure in this cavity is going to try and get out of there and equalize with the pressure below. So this will be in the same way as when you blow a balloon up, the pressure inside is higher. When you let go, the air tries to get out. So even though I'm saying that this is a sealed cavity, if it was truly airtight, then the air wouldn't flow out of this hole so well. So this cavity here will be the same air pressure as inside of the cockpit. So I'm going to make sure I've got uh, at least three holes in there so that the air can flow freely through there. So there's lots of holes here. So the air is going to try and get out of all of these holes all at the same time. So what I'm going to do is blank two holes off here with rubber bungs. So all the air has got to get out of that one hole now. So I think it will go out of there faster. And I'll blank off this one here. So it's going to try and get out of this hole faster. So when the 
air gets out of here, it should take the liquid with it and join this airflow. So that's the idea and uh, we'll see if it works. Here's the remnants of the, the lip for the inner sill, the outer sill and parts of the wing. So this bit was right at the end, you remember, it came down here. And uh, I was going to put, I was going to put a strengthening bar behind which gave me the angles etc. But um, I don't need to do it for the angles, I'm not going to do it now because it's going to be a water trap if that's the last bit of metal behind with just some spot welds there. Here's the castle rail, cleaned up. That's a good surface for me to weld onto. And finally I can get something back on this car instead of taking everything off. Time to get this sill back on again. Right then. Zoom out a little. So here's the new plate I'm going to put in. I'm just going to attach it to the remnants of the old inner silt. And that's because this joint is really good. Initially, I thought that these were rust patches, but it turns out they're wax oil. So the sills tacked into place all the way along there. I have got to put in a separate patch here and uh, the reason I've got to do that is because this is the length that the steel came in but it's actually turned out quite well because now I can put in a smaller piece of metal here and once I've got this in place I'm just going to spray a load of wax oil underneath here for the final time before I plug weld it all the way along the bottom and that's the best that I can do to keep the water out. I might add that uh, these are all going to be seen welds all the way along here so this is going to be completely sealed and I've done it this way around so that when I spray the wax oil up it will get between these two joints here. Right, I think what I'll do is I'll clear all my tools away out of the way of where I'm going to be working for the next God knows how long. So I'm using these clamps here to pinch the metal to the inner sill that I've left in place and uh, that's going around all of these little ridges quite nicely. I'm also using this hammer and chisel to just pinch it tight. So I am getting quite a neat weld there, even though it's quite difficult welding upside down etc. So I'm going to leave it there today and finish that off tomorrow. I did 
find two more holes on the inside when I painted it white. So I put some patches on the inside, not very neat admittedly. And I filled them from this side so they're completely solid. No water getting in there. Here we are then. I finished seam welding the top. And I did blow through in a couple of places. I don't see much point in grinding those off to make them look better. Uh, next thing, I'm going to paint the inside of this. Now, I do have to put this patch up here. But I think we're going to leave that until I've attached this. So before I plug weld this part of the sill, I'm going to spray some wax oil all the way up there and that's going to sit in the castle rail and cover the joint that I've just welded. Got some cardboard down and some old containers to catch the drips.